Justice for all. Uh, excellent. Well, do we have anybody with us online? We do not. We do not. Okay. So we have nobody with us. <coughs> Should be person. So, um, well, that's all right. Board reorganization yeah. and committee assignments comes before public comment anyway. All right. So, are we all? Mr. Wilsman might not be familiar with reorganization. Are you? Um, I, I guess the general idea is where uh, just selecting who's going to be sitting on the other boards for reporting back. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Officers of the planning board. So, so basically the way it goes is, is we've got a chair, a vice chair, and a, and, a, and a clerk. And those are the primary functions of the planning board. And then we've got the subcommittees. So um, the, way we, the way we do it is if there's more than one nomination, we'll take all the nominations to begin with. And then once all the nominations have been made for one specific position, then we'll vote on who we want to be the chair. So if there's more than one, then you can only vote for one. Sure. Makes sense, right? Sure. Um, and well, also, and oh, sorry, go ahead. Go, no. I was going to note that capital planning is a three-year commitment. It's a three-year term. So whoever's in the term, is that term up? It this, is up this year. This year is up. Mr. Brenner fulfilled Ms. Bertram's, Mrs. Bertram's uh, last year. Okay. Okay. And, and on that note, I will mention that I have heard from, I believe, a member of the Capital Planning Committee, um, but, a, but a member at large that people know uh, said that they would be happy to have Mr. Brenner continue on Capital Planning, if you so choose. And um, if good. nobody else has a great, I, I just wanted to mention that. I heard. Oh, that's they, very nice. Good things. I fooled them well. <laughs> and, and, and me as well, because I, I, I'm ready to nominate you for the chair position. I think last year, I think you were ready last year, but you had the health issues. Mm -hmm. And I think they've gone away, right? Uh, enough so. Uh, so. Yeah. So actually, the, uh, Thank you. the conversation I was going to initiate with you, Mr. Chair, was that I am, uh, I am, will, I am happy to offer to uh, take the role. I am not asking for the role. I don't feel the need to have that role to complete myself in some way. But you've done it a long time, and you're allowed breaks, too. I'm happy to put you in the hot seat. Either way is fine with me. OK. Um, so is, is, are there any questions about the process, I guess? No? It, it's relatively straightforward. Um, and what I will say is, as capital planning, as far as I know, is the only one that has any term to it. So all the subcommittees could change every year. There are certain subcommittees like MRPC, MJTC, and, and these others that are not so specific to the town that are not as necessarily um, important for the same person or, or uh, at least familiar. Continuity as Con it does. Continuity. There you go. Um, critical. And I, and I will say um, that is specifically for the Building Reuse Committee. Um, I'm not a big fan of being a member, but for continuity, um, there is a lot that's gone on, and, and I think they're at kind of the cusp of, of actually getting off the pot, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so, and, and, and again, I'd welcome anybody that wanted to, to throw their hat in for that. Um, but uh, other than that, and the Agricultural Commission, I'm, I'm a full member, so it, it makes sense. Unless anybody has a burning desire, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fully appointed member of that group, so it only makes sense. It's not anything extra for me. Um, whereas and that's not one of the things in the reorg. Oh, it's not? No. Okay. That, that was, that's a throwback to the liaison days okay. when there were a half a dozen boards that people liaisoned to. Sounds good. Um, I'm still going to bring it up. <laughs> There's no reason not to just it's okay good so I guess I guess that kind of lays the law i I'll, I'll start by asking is there anybody that has a committee position that they no longer want I mean if, if you're in a if you've been for a year in a committee position and you just it's not a good fit you don't like it it doesn't work for your schedule for whatever reason um, now would be a good time. I think Mr. Brenner was saying he doesn't like any of it. Oh, uh, not Mr. Brenner. Mr. Wilsmer was saying he doesn't like any of his committees. Oh, well. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> and we should give you some different ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I am happy to uh, pick up uh, anything that anybody feels that they've, you know, is taking up too much of their time or they don't want to continue doing. Okay. Um, do we have any unfilled currently? Uh, just the master plan steering committee. And that's because it's new. It's new. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Very good. So nobody has any desire to get off of their specific committee they currently have. Mine specifically, no, but I'm doing three. So I'd be happy to give one away to yeah. okay. whichever one you'd like. Um, I think MJTC, my schedule works the best for it because it's at 2.30 on Wednesday. So I don't mind staying with that one. But as far as MRPC or stormwater, I'm, I'm good with either. So stormwater is typically 7 o'clock on Thursday, yes. the third Thursday. And I, I'm not familiar with MRPC. MRPC uh, is the first Thursday. At 7. At, at seven. 7. So they're both... They're both Thursday at 7. Mm -hmm. And not to sweeten the deal, but next meeting for MRPC is in August, and they're going to have a barbecue. So uh -huh. I'm just okay. <laughs> sweetening the deal if you'd like to go to Lemonster. We could all go to that. Oh, yeah. Right? I, yeah. I believe so, yeah. yeah. We could. So your MRC experience is way cooler than mine was during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> you could have had a barbecue every meeting. I did during some of them. I mean, solo, but yeah. I, I, yeah. At least there were some good dinners during them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, super. Um, so currently, I'm the chair. Matt Brenner is the vice chair, and, and, and Amanda Reed is the clerk. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I would not mind being the vice chair to fill in uh, or ad lib however needed. <laughs> um, but regardless. So um, I guess we can go ahead and get started. I'll. I'll take nominations for the chair, and I will go ahead and nominate Matt Brenner. I would accept. Or do we need a second on that? Do need a second. Need a second. It's, okay, it's important that you want to accept it, but we also do need a second. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Are there any f other nominations for the chair? Hearing none. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, all in favor of Matt Brenner as the chair? Aye. Please aye. say aye. 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 Excellent. Unanimous, Mr. Brenner. Um, uh, I will take nominations for the vice chair. I would nominate Matthew Allison for vice chair. Excellent. Is there a second? I will second. Okay. Any other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimous for me as vice chair. Uh, now I'll take a nomination for clerk. I'm fine with still. I was going to say, okay. I would fine. nominate uh, Ms. Reed for clerk. Okay. I'll second. Um, any other nominations for clerk? Hearing none, all in favor of Amanda Reed as clerk, please say aye. 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 Unanimous for Amanda. Okay, now we get to, so we've got open space, municipal building design, AGCOM is next. Is that the only one that's not? Yeah, well, why don't we go through the list the way I have them in our reorg chart. Oh, I don't have the list. So it's MRPC. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Uh, that's all right. Sure. She forgot to put one right out. here for you. Oh, MRPC. All right. So I guess I guess Amanda was, was opining that she would not mind losing a third. A third or a second or? A, a third. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Either, I think MRPC or Stormwater, I'm fine with losing one of them. That's fine. And I don't mind keeping one of them and doing MJTC. I think I'm more interested in Stormwater mm -hmm. than uh, MRPC. Yeah. So if we do that, yeah. You could take both. I could. <laughs> just, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm going to at the moment. I'm just <laughs> saying. <Yeah. laughs> I, I love the honesty. I love it. Um, Okay, and, and Amanda, are you still comfortable remaining? Perfect, MRPC and MJTC, that's fine. All right. I then. see some of the same people in both meetings, so that works. Nice, I would accept the nomination for MRPC. I would nominate uh, Ms. Reed for MRPC. I'll second that. Second, okay, any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 
unanimous for that. And the next one is MJTC. Take a nomination for that. I, I would nominate Ms. Reed for MJTC. Uh, I'll second that. Second. Uh, any other nominations for MJTC? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Excellent. Um, oh, sorry. That's all right. I can bring, yeah. No, I, I thought you might. I'm sorry, it's capital board. planning next. So capital planning committee? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bernie, you're comfortable staying on there? Yeah. Does anybody have a burning desire? No. Very Bunch good. Numbers. I mean, it, it is interest. It is very interesting. It's something you want to get on before you no longer a planning board member. It is a, a unique experience. But it, it's also intense. But I found it very worthwhile to learn. But I'm happy to keep in the role, too. I'm not trying to push others into it. So I would nominate Matt Brenner for capital planning. I'll second. Any other nominations? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That was unanimous for capital planning. Open Space Ad Hoc Committee. I'm comfortable with that, but anybody has a burning desire, they're more than welcome to jump in. I nominate uh, Mr. Allison for Open Space Ad Hoc Committee. Okay. I will second. Second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Stormwater Task Force. I would nominate Mr. Wilsmer for Stormwater Task Force. I will second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye for yourself. Congratulations on your first committee assignment. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, municipal Building Design Committee. I would nominate Mr. Allison for Municipal Building Design Committee. I will second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Another new name. I don't <laughs> think we're going to have much contention here. Economic Development Committee. You comfortable with that? Very comfortable to remain there. It's not a big lift committee. If someone else would particularly like it, but I've also I feel like I've got to the point I have a rapport with the groups. So either way is fine with me. Any desires? I'll accept the nomination. Uh, I'll nominate uh, uh, Matt Brenner for the position. I will second. Moved and seconded. Any other nominations? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimous. Master Planning Steering Committee. Here we go. This is brand new. This is the contentious one. <laughs> Nobody has filled this yet, as it is brand new. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm foreseeing this position as being somewhat uh, a go-between, as as mm -hmm. far as as far as the planning board and the committee itself. Um, it would. I think that's, have you got anything further to say about this? No, I mean, I, I think that's correct. I mean, the, ultimately the master plan comes back to this group. Uh, whoever sits on it from this board will just be one of 15 in the steering committee. Uh, the steering committee will probably break down into multiple subcommittees that will do a lot of the nitty gritty work and then come back for a more high level, excuse me, conversation about each subcommittee's work amongst the 15 so it's probably a monthly commitment to start maybe becoming bi-monthly at one point as we get closer to wrapping up plus whatever subcommittee work uh, an individual commits to um, the nice thing is you know it's a 24 month term sure. at the most uh, with the intent of 2025 being when this goes to town meeting. Uh, so there's that. So to follow up on what he said is it is a two year, probably a two year thing, but, but we'll reorganize again next year. And again, this isn't a two year term, so it could be reassigned to a, <coughs> a, a second party or the same person could continue. And frankly, at, at, at any point, someone could say, you know what, it's too much. Right. And you can reassign. I think the idea would be whoever gets on would sort of see the term out to have some continuity. But also, I don't think there's an issue with switching. Some people have asked about having you know, a rotating membership, which I think is more challenging than 
one person who does it for a period of time and then gets off and someone else comes in. Uh, but it will work regardless of how we do it. Okay, so does anybody have a, a thought that they might like this? I'm not gonna go to Burning Desire yet. <laughs> um, I definitely think I'd be interested uh, in getting involved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I am interested as well, um, just because I think the master planning process is pretty great and important. This, the more I learn about it, the more I like it. But I also think Mr. Wilsmore would be a good choice as well. I think okay. any of us would be an excellent choice, to be frank. Sure. Do we want to draw straws? Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> <laughs> so there's been, this is unusual, somewhat unusual. There's, there's interest expressed by two people, and we, we don't have an odd number here. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like not to make this contentious. And, and the reality is whomever doesn't get the seat is not prohibited from exactly. attending. You know, and participation might be, it's unclear because it will depend on who's running those meetings, but I don't think I've been to a meeting here in town on a regular basis where folks who showed up and had an a you know, an actual interest have been turned away from providing participation. Uh, you wouldn't be a voting member and you might not get as much intimate participation, but I wouldn't think that you would be kept on the outside whomever is not the selected person. I, I, I will add to that. I've heard the school committee does not have to take public comment and regularly refuses to. Okay, well, you don't have to take public comment. You, you even don't. Unless it's in I know. It, in the guise of a hearing, why would I not? I well, I didn't. Why say would the chair not? I don't yeah. understand why they wouldn't. But, anyways, um, so hmm? we can draw straws if you'd like, or however we want to figure. I'm fine with just about anything. Yeah. Sure. How many? How many committees did you get? Uh, I am on. Uh, Two committees, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, that's you. Um, I am on two committees, however, but I was looking at Matt, which doesn't help me in my notes, because <laughs> uh, I am, in fact, me in my notes. There you go. Capital okay. planning and economic development. Well. All right, so I... But if, if Mr. Wilsmer would very much like to serve, I am willing to step to step aside for that as well. You could nominate him. Mm -hmm. That's that fair. Make it a lot easier. Yeah, it would. But uh, yeah, again. No, uh, that is, that is fair. Uh, I nominate Mr. Wilsmer for uh, Master Plain Steering Committee. Thank you. I will second. All right. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Excellent. Another unanimous. It was amazing. Super. All right. So, Mr. Chair, would you like to swatch, sw swap spots here and run the meeting, or um, it, it's totally up to you? Uh, I'm fine running the remainder of the meeting. Um, I'm. Do we have to swap spots for that, or I, uh, that yeah. I? It's your meeting now. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome. Should I get you a pina colada? Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> I met him. He's on vacation now. <laughs> Margarita, oh, I just though. feel like I need a drink suddenly. So, <laughs> All right. So that was board reorganization and committee assignments. So I see we are up for public comment. Do we have any members of the public? Uh, they will probably not be commenting then. All right. Next up, I see... We have first right of refusal for parcel four, Lemonster Road. That um, is correct. Adam, I know you sent us some info on this, but I, I did. it was of a nature that leads me to believe there's more for us to know. Uh, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, it's... So, back a few six, eight months ago, you did a first right of refusal for a 1.34 acre parcel that is associated with this parcel. Uh, that is on Sunny Hill Road, and it was to make three buildable lots along the frontage mm -hmm. on Sunny Hill Road of this parcel. The remaining land is 24 and a quarter acres and stretches between 
Sunny Hill Road and Lemonster Road, uh, where the very obvious swamp is on the right-hand side if you're heading south on Lemonster Road, just before you get to Sunny Hill, where they built that new um, white house that's sort of uh, a cape and a craftsman blended together. Uh, mm -hmm. So the proposal is for the current owner to remove the remaining property from chapter. Uh, I believe he's hoping to get two more house lots out of this 24 and a quarter acres. Uh, one of those fronting on Lemonster Road and connecting to the sewer in Lemonster Road and the other back in... I'm just going to use the laser pointer because it'll be way easier than moving the mouse around. So, ah, uh, it doesn't show. <laughs> <laughs> Why you do the LED screens? You can't. Your cursor doesn't work. No. It does. It just. Uh, so, here's Lemonster Road. Mm -hmm. Here's Sunny Hill. Here's the land associated with the original three houses. There's a dotted line here that is the wetland line. Mm -hmm. And this pocket here is where he intends to connect to the sewer on Lemonster Road. Mm -hmm. And this pocket here is where he intends to build the, I'll call it the fifth house, because we have three here, four here, this would make five. Uh, and I think there would be some reconfiguration of lot lines to provide for access through this frontage to this lot. Through which frontage, I'm sorry? Through the frontage on Sunny Hill. Okay. Uh, he has no ability to access here because this wetland connects to this property line. Mm -hmm. And by creating a house lot here or doing a division, he creates his own hardship. Uh, and that would not qualify as a limited project under the Wetlands Protection Act, the way that I understand how limited projects work. Now, is that because there's a guardrail there? The uh, no, it's because when you create a situation where you have to cross a wetland, it's no longer a limited project because you've created your own hardship. So I guess I'm thinking that the wetland is on the other side of that line. This is all... It, the wetland goes from here. This is a river. So, okay, so that thing looks like a road going between... Is a river. Is a river. Yeah. Is that Katakunamog? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> And so, you know, obviously the wetland goes here. I mean, this lot and this area may not even be buildable once you put the Rivers Protection Act line in. Well, do they even have frontage? I mean... Well, here they have frontage. Well, they grab it from the other lot. And here they're going to do some shuffle boating here. Welcome to the chair. So this is one of those things that, that they segment. They the, the one mm -hmm. point the 1.39 acres is that 1.34 the three port and that's what they're going to grab frontage off of well they create more uh, well they have to grab frontage off the 4.3 acres parcel one correct, correct. Okay. so and i can give you a little bit of history on this um that this seems like they're just like picking away at you a little bit at a little bit uh, this property was purchased by a resident pre-COVID, and they had intended on building three homes, one for themselves and one for each of their children. They started doing research into what it would take to do it, and they decided it was something they didn't want to do, it was too much, um, they were happy where they were, and they decided to sell it. Uh, so this Builder purchased what entered an agreement to purchase it. And in doing so, there was a chapter 61, I think it's just 61. Uh, 61B. Oh, it was 61B. Yes. Okay. Um, filed on this. And in filing the 61B, the owner believed that they had 
32 acres, I think. And they saved five acres, 5.34 acres out of, or 5.64 acres rather, mm -hmm. out of that total in order to have the three buildable lots that they were intending. When the builder was purchasing it, did their due diligence, the numbers didn't add up. And they were short 1.34 acres from what they thought that they had. And because of the way the lien for 61B was written, and the fact that there was no plan that went along with the lien, which is not a requirement of 61B, but gives everyone the ability to get on the same page by looking at it, uh, they found that they only had 4.3 acres out of the chapter land, and there was actually 25.59 acres in the chapter. <coughs> and there was no way to fix the, er the, the Scrivener's error without going through the okay. process of right of first refusal. And the builder had intended at the beginning to look at what he could build on the lot, but in order to purchase it and meet the timelines of the purchase and sale and, and the other parts, they needed to remove that 1.34 acres to make the buildable lots so he could reasonably purchase it knowing that he could build three lot three houses and he had always intended to come back and look at the lot to see what he could build on the other side on the other land uh, so while it does feel segmented and it is technically segmented I don't think it was ever, uh, you know, it, I, and I believe that when he, oh no, I don't know that he came originally, uh, but it was intended that that's what he was planning to do. So, Adam, could you uh, remi remind me, please, exactly what 61B is? Recreation. Okay. So it opens the land for the public to access trails and use it for passive recreation. Okay. Okay, is that one. Um, and we are discussing first right of refusal? Correct. On parcel two. two. That is correct. Parcel two only? Correct. I'm sorry, parcel four. Parcel four. I, I, I apologize, four. I have the wrong map up. I was going to say the wetland line looked quite a bit different. Yeah, it looked. I was I was noticing that as I looked over. Am I looking at the wrong map? Very good. Parcel four. Okay. So parcel four does have frontage on Lemonster Road. Yes, it does. But, but it's it's. Uh, but it, and it's adjacent to parcel one and three on Sunny Hill Road. Right, but is this what we call elusive frontage? On Lemonster Road, Elusive? well, you're not a you're not approving an A and R. I understand, but if we were that, on Lemonster Road, that's what is it illusory frontage? Um, no, I don't know what the I, this map isn't a, a scale where I can tell you what the distance between the wetland and the property line are. Um, and again, I'm I'm not a Wetlands Protection Act expert. Like, but I believe that this may qualify for a limited project. It would, what the... Parcel four? A limited project is a wetland crossing, right? Correct. But like you said, if they subdivided it, then they... they, they but they never it. would have had access to this. This always would have been... A, they're not creating hardship in this area. So if he, if he creates a lot here... Right. He's not creating any hardship because the... But if he created a lot further back, right? Correct. If he was, if he cut this off and was trying to go this way, yes. But he's intending to Beautiful. for these to be with that. Okay. Um, so he's already got three houses here. Yes. Limited project is only good for a single family house, correct? Or, or as many as you can squeeze in. I mean, uh, it's it's Shared. it's only just an acre plus in that little corner, and I think by the time you subtract the wetlands out and 
look at how much upland you have. <coughs> uh, there, if you can build anything, it would probably be a singular lot. So, in, ad additionally, not uh, through the chair. Yeah, please. Um, it, the previous discussion. Uh, the, typically, the open space subcommittee, which is a subcommittee of the planning board, would would have the first look at this, and because they're they're they they were formed specifically to have the qualifications, and they created a checklist for pieces of land mm -hmm. that that would be beneficial for the town to to acquire, and I believe that checklist has six or seven items. And I'm I'm thinking that this checklist might hit four or five of them at least. Um, so typically, we would take a recommendation from Open Space, and then and then we would have a recommendation to Select Board. Mm -hmm. um, but w because of the the way we do our meetings, everybody gets a crack at it. Um, and, and I mean, the board can pause and do make their recommendation at the next meeting that the, the planning board is a named entity in the 61 legislation right. mm -hmm. so we receive notice by product of the statute but we, we uh, and may, we're okay. reviewing it for if there's a planning need for the retention of this parcel by the town or the purchase of this parcel now, what has happened in the past is the planning board had created the open space subcommittee and has granted them equal status in review. And they have then gone and created a, a checklist that they work with in order to provide comment to the planning board and the select board. Um, there are times where the planning board has made their own recommendation and the open space committee also forwards a recommendation to the select board often they're in line with one another uh, i know that in the past um, property owners have approached the, the the conservation commission about this parcel and the commission has kind of said all the wetlands are already protected <laughs> it's more land that we would then need to manage why do we want this? I mean, there's the Rivers Act, there's the Wetlands Protection Act. You can't build anything there. It's, you know, so, um, and whether the current commission will say the same thing or not, I don't know. Uh, but, and from a, a, a planning function, it would be up to this board to make a determination if there's a, a viable use for this for the town. Uh, the other and this isn't really a consideration because monetary value or funding isn't a consideration in whether the board makes a recommendation to exercise or not uh, but this is being filed as a change of use not under a qualified offer because the current owner purchased this as 61 and kept it as 61 uh, through the purchase and the change in use requires the town to have the property appraised and execute the purchase within the 120 day window and again that that's not your that shouldn't influence the way the board votes that's more of a process but if we took too long, we could eliminate the town's option. In th in th or you could just not get your say. Okay. So yeah. if you took too long and the select board was like, no, we really want this, they may just act without you. Okay. They don't need your recommendation. Got they it. prefer to have it. Um, and we have the ability to wait un and defer our our judgment until we hear from the Open Space Committee. Yes. Correct? Yes, you do. Um, and would that, do we have reason to believe that waiting for that would significantly inconvenience the select board in some way and their final decision? I think they're fairly dependent upon them and us to make their decision. Yes. Unless there's a glaringly obvious need. Um, but that's just my opinion. I will.
So the we did receive notice this is considered an appropriate submission from the uh, office of the select board. Town Council has reviewed it. There is no date in which they're looking for response, okay. but they were told it is on our agenda this evening. Okay. So the 120 clock started when? Uh, May 22nd. And I'm wondering, days ago. how 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 about the uh, the abatements and the, the the snafu with the assessment crap? Um, are there still is there still a backlog for assessments right now? Are you aware? I guess that's not necessarily your bailiwick, but uh, my understanding is that the contracted assessor who was reviewing the lakefront properties submitted their report and that the board of assessors is currently reviewing lakefront abatements mm -hmm. i think they may have gotten through i know they got through the first meeting which i think was 150 mm. and they may have been through two meetings which would put them around 300 which would mean they would probably only have one more meeting left um, and that's, again, I, I try to watch as many meetings as I can while I'm working. Um, and sometimes I just zone out and don't hear everything that people say. Uh, sure. But now, the, I'm losing the word already, but you said that this would have to be mandatorily, you didn't say assessed, you said appraised. Appraised. And that would be a different because appraisal and assessment are different. Correct. correct? So we so would hire you, a private appraiser. So the, the two don't, is there any overlap between those two? So, so I'm really stepping out of my comfort zone here because that's all like, it's like black magic. I don't quite understand it. I just know it's out mm -hmm. there. Um, but I think they're fairly similar in the way that they're, exercised I know that assessors tend to be government employees mm -hmm. and they follow a specific detailed outlined DOR created set of rules and data collection and that stuff appraisers I think do a very similar thing but may have a different certification or approval process uh, and they but I, I think they kind of do like I think it's the same I think it's just a nomenclature thing but, so but the backlog doesn't necessarily affect it shouldn't affect because we would we wouldn't send our we wouldn't send a town employee to do it it would be a third party okay. I'm just trying to wrap understand. my mind around the process yeah. there okay so I would ask, uh, I would look to the board for thoughts or other questions or general ideas about, we, it sounds like we certainly could, I mean, we could make a decision on this tonight. We could punt it down the field and wait for open space to give us their thoughts. When is the next open space meeting? Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. It's supposed to be Wednesday. To be. Is, it, is it posted? Mm. Uh, let's see. Anyways, yeah, so, um, and if it takes another month that's another 30 days um i would recommend that we table it but that's mm. just my recommendation yeah i was gonna i was gonna say that too wait until we hear back yeah open space is posted for the 14th okay. yes good uh, i mean i i share that thought as well so adam if we were to table this uh do we need a motion to do as such or do we it just... never hurts to have a motion. All right. Um, I would accept a motion uh, regarding uh, tabling this if someone wishes to make as such. Um, I motion to uh, table this in the next meeting, uh, uh, dependent on uh, Open Space Committee's uh, recommendations. I will second. 
Moved and seconded. All in favor? We can just do vo voice, right? You don't have anybody online. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Great. All right. Thank you. And we are, my apologies. <coughs> we are on to board discussions. So we have master plan, solar bylaw, and driveways and entrances here. Is there anything? Uh, so master plan, the public kickoff is Thursday in this room, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's gone to all town employees. It's been posted on social. Uh, and now that we have a committee member, I will send out a, an email to the, I think we have six of the 15 appointed. Uh, and everybody's homework on the committee is to bring five people uh, I have had people tell me they're coming I'm hoping that they bring five people too because the more people the better uh, it will be a fairly informal session um, getting to know the process getting to know the players starting the visioning uh, go from about seven to nine and this is a meeting that others could theoretically attend. This is, this is like bring everybody who can, wants to come. Okay, it's, great. This is a hoedown. Wonderful. All right, this Thursday at 7 p.m. for those watching at home. Instead of watching on YouTube, you could watch in person. You could participate. Wow. <laughs> All those things you get to write in the comments, you can say in person. <laughs> If you dare, nobody, nobody does that. <laughs> exactly. Do our do our YouTube YouTube videos get? Because I guess in our YouTube, do the YouTube videos of our meetings get many comments? You or, know, I've never actually watched our meetings. I, I live them, so I try not to go back and watch them. Yeah, that might be something we should look at. Every at some point, so often, somebody says something nasty, and then they'll get some comments. But I think that's the only time I've ever seen them. Because it dawns on me, like there could be members of the public saying something, thinking that's a Monitored. Monitored, yeah. Um, which, I mean, th they're wrong, but it uh, doesn't mean that they, they just don't feel ignored, right, regardless. Yeah. And back to the master plan, the consultants were in town on Thursday of last week doing their interviews to gather data for public services and facilities and other chapters to uh, begin... You know, having a, a framing sort of what they're hearing from people to give them uh, some ability to really figure out what's what's happening. And Thursday will be the opportunity to really get voices heard <coughs> and start to lay the groundwork. It's not going to be the last by any means. Um, there is a survey available. Uh, there are posters at Town Hall, Senior Center, Library, Ritter and again on social with a QR code and there are also hard copies of the survey at all those locations uh, and if somebody for whatever reason can't get to those locations and they want to call me at the Ritter building or send me an email which if you can't get to those locations and I can send you a hard copy survey you can send it back to me I can email it to you any of those things great Thank you, Adam. Uh, anyone have anything else to say about master plan? No. All right. I do have a oh. question. We have we have it's through the chair. We yes, we sir. have we have six people that are filled spots. Can, yes. Can you tell us who they are, or do you have it off the top yeah. here? I know Karen Menard got that is one got of from them. Parks. Um, um, so master plan steering committee. Uh, Mr. Bob Pease and actually Rich Birch from the Conservation Commission, Karen Menard from Parks, Evan Waters from Finance, Deb Lincoln from the Council on Aging, and Carol Archambault from the School Department. And Bob Pease will deputize Rich Birch in the event that he's unable to attend. Nice. So that sounded like three chairs. Uh, Carol, Bob, and um, yeah, and I mean, I think Bob will be a backup, but, nice. but Carol, Bob, and I think 
uh, Evan is also the chair. That's what I thought. Deb may be the chair of Council on Aging. She may be, yeah. Nice. I mean, and, you know, these are folks we see around, and, and that's not a bad thing, and they also know a lot of people. So exactly. they have mm -hmm. the opportunity to really help people engage. Um, and I'm hopeful that uh, as we really start to dig into this, the consultants are, they're already strategizing ways to engage people digitally. Good. Great. Earning their money. Yeah, they've been fantastic so far. I think you guys made an excellent choice. Super. Yeah. Besides being gratifying for us, that's, that's just good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, the, every time I, I speak with them, they're energized and they're excited about it and they're like they're in it this isn't like they're not just filling out forms and creating templates nice wonderful well thank you uh do we have anything on the solar? i don't have solar and i'm i'm really rough sketch on the driveways and entrances it's fine all right if I may, yes, um, on Mr. the Austin. solar bylaw, uh, Miss Mann, Lynn Mann, was yes. the one who brought yes, that? Yes, she was. Um, she, she, uh, she caught me at the farmer's market oh, last Sunday. Okay. Um, she did, she, she's, she's not sure, aside from, the, aside from the last email, basically saying what you were looking for, she's not sure what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reach um, back out to So I, I, I think, I, I think she, she has good intention, but I'm not sure she's really got, um, a, a, a firm thought on what she was rec suggesting mm -hmm. is what it sounded like to me. Um, she's very open um, and she's she's energized. She's yeah, anxious. she is, and she's great to talk to. I um, we've the past couple of months have been busier than I wanted them to be. Sure. Um, we are trying. We filled two and are filling a third position at the Ritter. So okay, um, and. We just applied for a grant for design work on Lemister Shirley Road um, to improve the intersections at Fort Pond and Reservoir and to look at addressing the geometric Why are we issues. doing that? We just, we just permitted an eight-acre building, and their, part of their permit was... I'm sorry, through the chair. Yeah, part of their ahead. permit was, it was based on them inputting dollars if there was a, an increase beyond what they said well, so why I, well they, they haven't occupied the building so this isn't i know a, well, we, they have three wasn't it 50 75 and 100 they were going to do three different studies no they provided a 10 percent design and they were going to monitor for 12 months post occupancy and if the variance was greater than I want to say it's 15% of the estimates, they, there would be financial penalties. I disagree with that. My understanding was that there was at least two, maybe three different points at occupancy levels of that building that they were going to reevaluate. But anyways. But I, no, it was a 12-month study, and they were... I, well, I, I can look back at it, but this is this is more about the corridor in general than that specific development it could use um, it honestly that yeah. the intersection at reservoir road is <laughs> hideous bizarre hideous uh, i mean it, it's always you're, been you're looking at the sky when you pull up if you try to turn left so you have to use the steering wheel to kind of pull yourself up to look down the road um the crossing traffic with keating the 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 rock outcropping i mean there's more issues than just the additional traffic and i think what the town's trying to do is um, leverage state monies to improve that corridor because I think as we've seen Keating is prepared to and is the Keating family not the Keating Corporation uh, is starting to divest of land I have another question on that go ahead where did that where did that impetus come from how, how did that come about the improvement yeah um, there has been talk about um, development across the way okay uh, there has there was interest in land beyond the railroad bridge that fell through did this come through planning board that's come through select board that the town oh, no, manager this came it up the the town manager and i were were okay. looking at grants and and it was yeah. it's a design that's available okay thank you mr Brennan. Uh, it's a no match grant with from the town um 
I, I would encourage anyone who has not driven that res reservoir reservoir road intersection to consider doing so at an not carefully. particularly busy time of day with full awareness. I spend a lot of time at that plant. I've been down and around there. It's terrible. Um, it's a uh, scary. It's an interesting yes. time. I, I I look forward to the results of this grant because boy howdy. <laughs> All right, thank you. <clears throat> um, with all of that, we are on to minutes approval. This will be the minutes, uh, and only the minutes, for our 522 meeting, correct? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once people have reviewed it, I will be happy to take a motion. motion to approve the minutes for the planning board meeting from May 22nd, 2023. A second? Sure. Great. Um, in that case, we'll take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Wonderful. I don't have to say I'll oppose if it's just... No. Nope. Great. Okay. Moving on to committee reports. We have open space ad hoc committee. Uh, no meeting to report. Our me next meeting is uh, two days Wednesday. Okay. Lunenburg Municipal Building Design Committee. We have not met since our last meeting, and I have not heard anything on a future schedule, so I, I don't know if when the next meeting will be. Okay. Uh, Agcom. Agricultural Commission, unfortunately, we are, I have, uh, our next scheduled meeting will be this Thursday at 7 when we're having this, this thing here. So maybe, uh, and I have to post it tomorrow, so possibly um, uh, let me talk to some members and we'll see if we might just join this group and reschedule our meeting. But there's no report, sorry. Okay, no worries. Capital Planning Committee has not met wrong time of year. Economic Development Committee has not met since our last meeting. That is correct, right? I mean, you, you cocked your head first, but there was no meeting I was... No, you were at the last meeting we had. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. All right. Stormwater Task Force. We have not met since our last meeting, and we're not meeting this month. We're not meeting this month. We're Next. skipping to July. All right, MRPC. MRPC, we met last week on Thursday, um, mostly talking about MRPC's budget. They're kind of hitting that one hard constantly. Um, uh, just changing funds around from different accounts to cover future um, retirement, which is you, I remember you uh, asked about that. I was about to ask if there's been any word about the legislation and everything as, that they were advocating for. As far as I've heard, nothing about that. I haven't heard anything about them not being able to cover people's retirement benefits, pensions, however they phrase it. Um, this was simply just, we're moving money around to make sure that we can cover them in the future. Okay. Uh, but other than that, nothing really to report. Great. MJTC. MJTC, we meet this Wednesday, so we have not met since the last meeting. Very good. And I wish, I want to wish Mr. Wilsmer a happy final silent committee report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and director's items. Give me just the, the grant, which we sort of I slid in beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, if you haven't met uh, Annie, our new board admin, uh, if you're in the area, swing by, say hello. Um, <clears throat> she's got big shoes to fill, but she's she's doing a shift already, so uh, you know we'll we'll get there. She's she's got all the all the tools, and now it's just getting through the getting comfortable and learning process. So great, wonderful. Um, Meeting schedule. Do we say anything here? Do we have? I. I. It's on the agenda, but yeah. I, no. It's. It's really just an, an update on you know, making sure that everyone knows we meet at six p.m. We meet at town hall, and what's going to be on the agenda. Are we supposed to say that out? I mean, you just did, so I'm sure it counts. But are we supposed to say that out uh, loud during? Yeah, the I mean, Miss 
Mr. Allison has has every every other week for the past few years. We so can continue that then. I'm fine with it. I'm just see. I'm not actually very smart. I just am pretty. <laughs> so. So so, if I may. Yes. Uh, you are the chair now. So, if anything that I've done in the past you don't like you don't have to continue and anything that i haven't done in the past if you did like you can start yeah so uh, i just just letting you know i appreciate that and i will be frank i have run enough organizations that i am very comfortable with that <laughs> but i'm also i've run enough organizations that i am even more comfortable when things aren't broke i do not feel the need to start fixing them uh, Sounds like a homeowner who's bought an old house. Uh, <laughs> funny enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Ongoing items. Do we? Uh, we've updated the master plan. Uh, I'm working on the draft of the aquifer protection district. I'm looking to try and have those both done to sort of dump on the desk of the um, building commissioner to get his notes. Uh, also, uh, we will probably be working on the floodplain bylaw as well uh, i've been notified by fema or by dep that we have <coughs> new flood insurance rate maps for the town of lunenburg they did not do a new study they just took the old study and they put it into gis so now there's pretty pictures and colors that go along with it nice. and if anybody has ever looked at the flood insurance rate maps from the 80s they're a trip because there's like a quarter of the roads in town and just these blue blobs. And they're like, here's your flood zones, go try and figure out insurance. And now it's all digitized and you can see the house on the aerial photography. So um, I expect we'll be busy with Lomas for the next couple of years because the last community I was in, we, did, we went through this and in two years I processed 81 Lomas um, because all of a sudden these, these maps come out and the mortgage and insurance companies go oh look at this we can actually see where our investments are and they just send out letters left and right and so um the surveyors start getting real busy because people are like i've lived here for 40 years it's never flooded what is a loma a uh, letter of map amendment okay My apologies it's Great. the the formal instrument that you file with the federal government to remove your property from a, a flood zone a Okay. And essentially what you do is you hire a surveyor and like if the floor is the flood zone and the table is your house, the surveyor surveys it and says, look, come on, physics, water can't run uphill. Mm -hmm. And they just certify the elevations and all of that. And they put together a form and you pay them a bunch of money. And most people say it's probably about half the cost of the first year of flood insurance in a in a, a floodplain A, so it's worth it to most people. Mm -hmm. well, Amanda's shaking her head like she's done this before. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, if, if I may ask, yes. so our, our firm, I believe, is from 87? Yes. The last time? Mm. 1987. And so they recently redid Concord's, Concord Mass, which is, 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 is a historic uh, lake, basically. Um, but their flood elevation rose almost two feet, mm. almost two feet. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm curious, is, is it a statewide digitization that they've done? Is that what it's it is? Countrywide. Countrywide, okay. They're, they're in the process of doing it across the entire country. And some areas are having new flood studies done. Um, I believe the Nashua did. Um, and... Concord may have gotten that through. Does Charles run through Concord? Mm, I don't believe so. I don't think so. Um, but because that, I, I would expect they would have done it on the Charles as it comes from the west to the east. Um, and I don't know if they did the entire Charles River Basin, maybe, and that's why Concord was included. Uh, and yeah, we, we were. This has been in the works since pre COVID. And um, they told us that Lunenburg was not getting a flood study. They were just digitizing the maps to update their quality. 
Adam, I want to say thank you for exposing to me a huge piece of Massachusetts ge geography knowledge I am apparently lacking. Because <laughs> I sat here and went, is the Charles in Concord? I'm like, I have no idea where the Charles goes unless it's Boston and Cambridge. And outside of that, I, I know, don't I know have it's a in Hopkinton. Of that river. Oh, is he? That's already more than I knew. I just didn't have a conception of where the river is otherwise. Hmm. All right. Anything else on ongoing items? Nope. Okay. Public comment. Oh, I should probably see if we have any. Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> Board comment or concerns? I have uh, two comments quickly. One is uh, I, I have full faith in Mr. Allison's ability to be vociferous, and if that sounds uh, like a negative statement, no, I mean it absolutely as a positive statement. And um, now that I'm apparently chair of the board, I welcome and encourage your thoughts at the meetings. And I know comments go through the chair because that's how it works, but. Uh, don't. If you're wondering where my stance is on people speaking, for the love of God, please do. <laughs> um, and secondly, now that uh, Marjorie is officially retired, correct? Correct. Yes. I, I, on behalf of the board, just want to say thank you again for many years of amazing service to the town. I hope her. I hope her next chapter as being a granny goes smashingly and nothing but the best for her. That's all I got. Anyone else? <laughs> Likewise, my jury will be sorely missed. Mm -hmm. All right. In that case, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Um, I, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Does that count as a second? second? I'll second it. Okay, sure. great. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and we're done. Now you're done. Nice.